Hey, what is up, everybody? It is Trey with another trade recap. Uh, man, today was tough. I tell you, I am, I am not doing so good. I clocked uh, what two hundred over two hundred dollars in losses on the day. Not so good. Um, we're gonna talk about it. We're going to go through the trades and talk about what I did wrong and what I got to look out for moving forward. So uh, let's just uh, let's start at the top. I mean, now I'm, I'm looking here at this total profits of negative 164. Uh, this is, you know, coming out of a $73 profit yesterday. Uh, so not feeling terribly great about things um we're actually going to do this in order of how they happened which is from the bottom up uh so let's talk about alyi and alyi i'm going to get rid of my trades just to make the part a little cleaner so i bought this Around you know around here for this breakout to new highs uh, toward the end of the day I kind of bought around this top of the breakout which is a little nerve-wracking I I like to um I like to try and get in near support level when I can you know um, the most ideal thing for me on this play would be you know watching for this bounce off of the moving average line and then and then cruising up, but I I miss, you know I missed it so I uh, instead ended up just buying the breakout, waiting for the consolidation to happen, and let's actually pull the trades back up because now I'm f I feel like I'm I'm looking. To oh no, no I was right, bought this right and okay so where things went wrong was. I added two times, two times I added, you know, and my perspective going into this was like, I'm at it. You add to your winners. You let your winners run. And that's well and good. Uh, my issue is though, like, you know, I have $5, sorry, $500 uh, position sizes on OTCs and my account was only $2,000. So I had no business adding here and adding into the close. I should have sold anywhere around here for profit. And what's extremely frustrating is even with these two ads, before I did this third ad, you know, there was a few minutes here where I could have I could have dipped with like 70 bucks in my pocket, but it started to fail on me. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna buy into the close, you know, for the gap up, and and have like a nice solid gain in my account. Idiot. Like, first green days are not as reliable. Right now, I should have I should have known that the uh, the spike failed, as you can see. Let's get rid of this again. And it just took me a while to get out, and I couldn't get out all at once. So I, I, I ate this loss, you know, big two, you know, hundred and eighty dollar loss or whatever, which closer to two hundred dollar losses when you factor in all the commissions and everything. You know, no spike sized in way too big. I gotta stop doing that. This is actually the same problem uh, that I had with. BRGO, I think. BRGO was another one that was like one of my biggest losses that came from just sizing in way, way, way too big. Tried to play this breakout, no business trading intraday, plus I took way too much size, waited too long to cut losses, should have failed when I saw the difficulty to break. You know? 
a little different. Like it fell within my rules. It was during that first hour of the day and such, but ugh. Anyway, we're we're gonna learn from it. it ain't you know, it's not gonna happen again. Let's take this uh let's take us back to this first page. And uh the next thing I'll talk about is JFU, which you see that little zero dollar profit on. I got this this morning coming out of my stupid loss and I was waiting. Now I actually got the entry pretty good at 282. You know, and my thoughts were it's 282. I'm going to risk VWAP, you know? And we we touched VWAP and I I held and I was like, "All right, cool, cool, cool. Give it some time, give it some time." But I wanted I wanted it to I wanted it to uh right here, but it didn't. And then we retested VWAP again. I was nervous. I could have I suppose taken that as a double bottom, and added strength to my conviction. But instead I I left here, you know, for just what twenty eight cents profit. <laughs> okay, and then what does it do? The next minute proceeds to clock new highs. New highs, new highs, new highs to 315. So, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know, made a few cents a share. And sold in, you know, maybe uh, sold in the 305s, 306s, or whatever. But I was on the right track, so I can't be that mad. Uh, I just. Well, I probably had too big of a position size. It's 172 times 282. Like I, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to do hundred dollar positions on the on the listed stocks, but you know I wanted to do a five hundred dollar position because I had just done the big loss and yada yada, and I I wanted to to try and and make back some of the the loss, but you know it, it didn't work out. You know, same thing. I'm basically telling you everything I wrote on pro on profitly, right? Yep. Lame. Respect the risk level. Give the give the trade time to play out. Respect the risk level. I didn't get stopped out. I should have waited. R S H N. This I don't even know why I'd, I was looking at this. I don't do morning panic dip buys. I don't. I mean, I would like to at one point, but it's not one of the patterns I'm focusing on, and. You know, I, I saw this little fake bottom here. I thought this would be the real bottom. You know, I thought this was the confirmation. We were kind of sideways for more than just one or two minutes at a time. You know, which which we didn't really get after the after the descent in the morning. So, I, you know, I believed that we were going to continue uptrending and, you know, possibly test VWAP in the one sixes you know so so i think the the risk reward was there um and i put my risk at low of day which was uh 12 2 and i you know and i got stopped out you know 12 1 is where i ended up getting executed right you know just below so i'm not mad at the way the trade played out i'm not mad at myself i followed the rules of risk and letting the things play out it just you know it didn't work this time the real bottom was here and and you know 0 0.0104 and now it's you know back in in the one threes so oh one three and three divided by what point oh one oh four twenty that's a you know i missed out on a 27 percent move like that could have uh that could have done me well, but I just missed the bottom. And you're under PDT. I got one day trade left. I don't want to squander it. You know, there's going to be another opportunity one day that just seems so obvious, like GMER was some days ago. I don't even know if it was 15 days ago. Yeah, look at this. You know, this was a... Uh, the next day I saw this like kind of doing this move and I was like, oh man, it's going to happen. And I had no day trades because I did this revenge trade thing over here. 
you know, I, I, I messed up this first trade and I was able to, to take another swing at it for break even when really I should not have been emotional and I should have just waited and I could have maybe caught this the next day, but I couldn't because I had no day trades left. So learning from that experience, I'm keeping a day trade available to me. Um, take this back to RSHN. And, and that's about it. Those are my trades for the day. Uh, yeah, feeling pretty, pretty shite right about now, but tomorrow's a new day. See what happens. Uh, you know, I will become a profitable trader. It will happen one day. It will happen. I just got to stop making these stupid rookie mistakes literally the only reason my equity curve is down has been because i take too big of a position size it's literally the only reason so anyway with that i am off thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video